Hi everyone. Here's a little introduction into grids, guides, and layers. Oh my. Uh, we're going to work on some basic tips and tricks for using them to improve our artwork. And we're using Adobe Illustrator. So uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, our guides. I'm sorry, our grids. Under uh, the Illustrator menu, let's go to Preferences and take, it a few, take a look at a few of the settings here under Guides and Grid. Uh, so, what you'll notice here is uh, under Guides and Grid, there is a color for your guides and a color for your grid. By default here, it's set to light gray on the grid, uh, light blue on uh, guides. And the subdivisions here, we have a grid line every one inch, and subdivisions are set to eight, and uh, if that's checked, I have grids in back. So if I click OK, that's the default. I'm going to go to View to show what it looks like. Go to the View menu and go to uh, Show Grid. Now you'll see it looks kind of like graph paper. So if I draw something, um, I can set it up so that it conforms to the grid. And I can do that visually or I can also use the setting here which is snap to grid. So snap to grid means that when I move my object around the edges of the vector line will snap in place uh, and align with and snap to uh, those grid lines. Now that's really useful if you're doing some precise precision drawing and you want to have objects line up with one another and be in the same position. Um, really useful for that kind of drawing. It's also a visual cue for doing layout if you need to make sure that your your text boxes or your picture boxes align with one another. If you go to preferences we can also change a few more things about how the grid looks. If you look at the grid settings something that I find useful is right here we have grid segments every one inch. Now depending on what you're working on uh, maybe you want to have larger or less space. But let's say I'm doing a typical poster design or something like that. I might set that to one and one so that my grid spaces are larger. So if I click OK you'll see here. So I'm not really worried about smaller intermediate steps. I really am trying to do larger more obvious uh, alignments. So I might use a much larger grid. Another thing that can be done in that same menu space is change where and how the grid's position. Right now it's set to grids in back. That's the default. I can tell it to put grids in front too. So maybe if I need to see my artwork but also still see the grids and not have them covered, that's a useful setting for when you're working with your uh, your grids. Um, you can also change the color if you don't like that gray you can go back to that menu and uh, pick a different color, brighter color if you want. So that works on all your document pages and is really useful for layout. If you want to get into anything a little more custom then that's when you're going to use guides. Alright so let's see what guides do for us. Guides work in conjunction with the ruler bar. So if you don't see your rulers press command R or go to the view menu and select show rulers in my case they're already visible uh, and then they show up on the bar. If you're going to use and create guides typically what you do is you take your selection arrow click on that ruler bar and drag down a guide. Now notice my grid is still visible and I still have the snap setting so as I'm drawing guides it's forcing them to snap in place uh, to my visible grid. Well I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna hide my grid and I'm also gonna go back and I'm going to uh, uncheck snap to grid. Okay so that means that if I grab a guide I can move it. Oh it appears my guides are locked. That's useful. When you draw your guides you want to be able to put them in, in place and um, not move them accidentally. But if you need to move them or reposition them you can go back to the view menu, click on guides,
and select unlock guides that way they can be grabbed and moved around and repositioned as you need them but I find it useful like in the beginning to lay out my guides put them in place and then lock them so I don't accidentally move them later on okay there's one more setting to pay attention to notice how when I click on this square and I move it the center point is solid blue well that's the uh, the point of that object which means if I grab that with my cursor it will snap to a guide so that is also a useful alignment tool is that snapping feature um, sometimes it's annoying but that's what these little snap settings are for on your view menu you can turn that on and off if you like and align your object visually it's all up to you the other thing that's visible on my artwork right now is smart guides smart, uh, smart guides uh, are helpful useful what they do is they label things so if you move your cursor to a, a particular spot it labels it tells you what you're about to select um, I find that super annoying so I always turn it off all right um, now let's talk a little bit about uh, making guides so you can make your typical you know horizontal vertical guides no problem just using the ruler but it's possible if you need to make some sort of a diagonal alignment or a more unique composition maybe you want to use the line tool so let's say I want to use the line tool and draw a diagonal line across the corners of my drawing okay and then I want to turn that into a guide let me go ahead and just make a second one just just for kicks draw another one across my page all right so I'm gonna select those two lines those two black lines I'm gonna to go to my view menu and I'm gonna to go to guides and this time I'm gonna select make guides so now I've given myself two um, transparent not transparent but invisible guides that I can use on my page for alignment purposes uh, they won't print that's the beauty of guides they are not printable um, but they are editable you can continue to adjust that guide as long as it's not locked you could use your direct selection tool and move it and realign it but as a visual aid it's really useful sometimes to take lines and create guides out of them um, okay let's take a look at something else let's take a look at our layer palette so by default when you're drawing objects in Illustrator each one of those objects is actually uh, being placed on top of the others that's just kind of the default setting in the layer palette you'll see that they're all collected on layer number one but if you click the down arrow here you'll see that those objects are actually placed one on top of the other and depending on their position you can drag and move that object below another object so it's really useful when you have a lot of stuff on your page and you can't really target and find out which one it is sometimes go into the image uh, I'm sorry the layer here and click the down arrow and you'll see all those separate objects so artwork is never really flattened in Illustrator objects are always kept separate from one another and they can be grabbed um, as many times as you want right there under that uh, layer palette um, here's another thing let's say we want to lock something in place a really useful thing is to come over here to the layer palette and click the little empty space next to the eyeball okay that now locks everything that's on layer number one so that means you can't select anything you can't draw on that layer even it's all locked in place you can unlock it or you could even go in and individually lock different pieces that's really useful as well or let's say you need to grab something that's on a lower part of the layer if you click the little circle on the side you actually select that object or if you want to select all of them you select the main one alright one of the useful ways that I like to work with layers in Illustrator is um, I like to separate my artwork into maybe two maybe three layers 
I'll put my main image, maybe my template, on the main background layer. Then I'll create a new layer for my drawing. And anything that I put on my image or my bottom layer, I'll lock. So it stays in place and I don't temporarily, temporarily move it if I'm trying to adjust artwork and do things above it. Then I might do a third layer on the very top for text or for other alignment objects. But it's really useful to separate your artwork in that way. Don't worry so much about uh, separating the individual objects into separate layers. Illustrator's already doing that for you. So you can go kind of nuts with the layer palette in Illustrator. So I think it's much easier to keep it simple, two or three layers at the most. Um, the only other thing I might do is if I spend a lot of time doing a drawing and doing a really detailed uh, piece of art and um, I'm going to end up modifying it, I might duplicate the layer and then keep the copy and hide the copy and then have that ready for my next step. So to, so to do that, let's say I, I like this bottom layer and I want to duplicate it, I'll go to the layer drop down menu, I'll hit duplicate. And then I might go back here and click the eyeball and hide the original so I don't actually mess up the original. And then I'll work on the copy. That's also a really useful thing is just using layers, duplicate layers, to keep your original stuff and not lose it. Um, okay, so I think that's a pretty good rundown of how you can use guides, grids, and layers for uh, helping with your layouts. And uh, we'll talk later about more stuff. See ya.